<laughs> Inhaling hot vinegar. Yeah. I do it for you. <laughs> Your face is so funny. I'm focused, Camille. Camille, another success. Another success. <laughs> everybody we are super excited for this video today it is something that we order and love when we can find it gluten-free somewhere at a sushi restaurant yes I have ordered it at way too expensive of a price for what <laughs> it is and the amount that I'm given so we're super excited to show you how to make spicy tuna crispy rice today yay, yay. <laughs> More excited to eat it, yes. probably. Um, but we want to get one step out of the way right off the bat to get it cooling, which is the rice. So we're going to start making a little bit of seasoned rice and we're going to stick that in the fridge right away and then we'll move on to everything else. Naomi already cooked the rice, if that's not obvious. Um, and it's cow rose. Yeah, for short, short grain, white rice, cow rose works great. Other sushi rice works perfect as well. And if you don't have any of that, just white rice will be totally fine for this. And what do you season? season I'm going to rice. season it with rice vinegar, sugar, and salt. I apologize to all of my sushi experts out there. I'm not doing it in an expert way today. I'm going to season it just kind of the way I will mix it all together. It's not going to be the correct way to do sushi rice. Home However, style. we're just gonna make it work and it's gonna taste good. Yes. Cool. So let's get some of this stuff out of the way and then we'll mix the rice together. Okay. So we made our rice in the rice cooker and I cooked one cup of raw rice. I'm gonna do, I think I'll make a ratio and see how much I wanna use once um, I start pouring it in. I'm gonna do a quarter cup of rice vinegar. If you wanted to make it really easy on yourself, you could buy seasoned rice vinegar at the grocery store and it already has salt and sugar in it. When I was in college, I used to make avocado cucumber rolls a lot for lunch and just used seasoned rice vinegar, threw it on my rice, and it was perfect, tastes good. I have a quarter cup of rice vinegar. I'm gonna start with a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of kosher salt. So I'm actually gonna pop it in the microwave for like 45 seconds to, maybe 30 seconds, to try to heat it up so that it does dissolve a lot easier. Perfect, okay, that 30 seconds, was perfect, the salt and sugar is just about dissolved. So I'm gonna just kind of sprinkle it over. I love that sushi rice is like vinegary, it's so freaking good. Just gonna stir it up. When you're stirring this, try to like fluff stir it, like this, kind of tossing and stirring at the same time because your rice will clump and squish if you stir it too vigorously. You don't want mushy rice. Yeah, I'm just gonna use it all. <laughs> <laughs> we really like the flavor of vinegar, so. Yeah, it's good. I want it to be like kind of shiny, glossy, <laughs> tossed on the counter, <laughs> you know, how it is. Okay, looking pretty good. You can tell that it is a little wetter, which is nice. Um, you can see that it's shiny. Let's taste it. Vinegary. Nice. Has a strong flavor, but I like it. Okay, so I put it in here specifically because we're going to spread it out in this container and then stick it in the fridge so that it can kind of kind of harden and, and become one like rice brick. Become one. <laughs> yeah. 
And, uh, and then we'll be able to cut little squares out to get our bases, our bases for our crispy rice situation. Show the fans. It's kind of packed down, shiny, vinegary, yum. Perfect. So we're gonna pop that in the fridge for probably 20 minutes or so. Um, the goal is just to get it kind of, solidified isn't the right word, but just into one um, so we can cut it easily. So however long that takes, we'll let you know. Never done this before. So originally Naomi had the idea to do salmon. Yeah, um, I really wanted to do salmon. And we love salmon. I think we typically pick salmon in our sushi over tuna. True. Um, I definitely do. But I like tuna as well. And I've really only seen it, I feel like, at restaurants as tuna. Yeah. I. But it would be delicious with salmon. We just kind of struck out in the sushi yeah, I just couldn't salmon find it department. Today. You definitely want to make sure that you're buying sushi or sashimi grade, same thing, fish at the store. So we've done sushi nights before and we've gotten the sushi grade fish at a Japanese market where they're selling it as sashimi um, that you could just eat sliced up. And we just used that for our sushi night. This time I went to a local fish market here in San Diego and purchased whatever they had as sashimi grade. That's why I ended up with the tuna and not salmon because their salmon was not, um, good to eat raw. So, I think what I did when I made it last time was I just chopped it up really fine. And went okay. Through. I think I'm gonna... I was in charge of the spicy tuna during our last sushi night. She was. And cut pieces of it. Like that? And then stack them and chop them again. Okay. I don't want it to be like Mush, I don't think. I think I want it to be a little bit PC. I'm really glad I have this knife. None of my other knives would have been able to manage this very well. Just use the sharpest knife you have, or you can also, just thought of this right now, you can also stick the tuna in the freezer for maybe 15 minutes. If you're trying to cut a raw protein, having it be slightly frozen, like not quite frozen, but just harder by being so cold that it's almost frozen, it's gonna be a lot easier to slice because it won't be as like gummy almost, how it's kind of yeah. soft and sticky. We do that with bacon a lot. Um, I've actually also heard people do it with like softer cheeses when they wanna grate them by having it harder in the freezer, it's um, a little easier to handle. I'm gonna get it into little cubes and then I think I'll go over it with my knife a little more to get it even smaller. This is eight ounces of tuna. I panicked and bought a pound, but I think this will be enough for what we're trying to do. You can see that it's Still kind of chunky, but also a little squishy. I think this is a good texture. Yeah, I think it too. Scoop it up, put it in your bowl. All right, so I'm gonna use the white of the green onion and put it into our tuna, and then we'll garnish with the green. I don't want chunkies of green onion. I just want bits of onion in there. I love the flavor of raw onion with things that are really savory and fatty. Super, super tiny mints. And then we'll throw this in our bowl. Perfect. Now we're going to add in some mayonnaise and sriracha. So I've never really been a mayonnaise person. The texture of it has always just like messed me up. Like I hate it. So then I found about, out about Kewpie, Kewpie? Kewpie mayo. 
this one, this really ugly bottle. Um, this cute it's when we got it. Japanese, right? Yeah. And the texture just seems so different to me. And it's not jiggly and in a big jar. I don't know, I'm crazy, but I like it. Uh, I use it in my tuna salad and this is also a tuna salad. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna start with a tablespoon of each. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. I don't want it to be drowning in sauce. I definitely, obviously want it to be nicely seasoned, but the tuna is really great fish and I don't wanna like make it so covered in sauce that you can't taste the actual fish. I think this is actually looking pretty good in terms of yeah. creaminess. Yeah, this is look good. I'm gonna put a little bit of sesame oil mm. and a touch of salt. So let's do, uh, I'll measure for you. Two. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon? Yeah. It's a pretty strong flavor. Do half a teaspoon. I was almost thinking that was too much, but let's do half a teaspoon and we'll do a little two finger pinch of salt. Like that. If you're not like a crazy spicy person, you could probably do like a tablespoon and a half of, of uh, mayonnaise and like half a tablespoon yeah. of sriracha, however you want. Um, but you know us. We love the spice. That's really good. Mm. Oh, that's good. good. I love it. I love the sesame oil. Ooh, it's onion. spicy. Hits you in the back of the throat. Yeah. It's perfect for us, but mm. I do think you could just go less on this. Yeah, if you're sensitive if you want. to spice, go it's a little, little, little spicy. <laughs> go light, but I love it. Uh, in the wow. fridge. A sesame oil is good. I think that was a perfect amount. I don't think I need three serranos, but I, we are going to use the serrano to garnish it. Probably only need one. Mm -hmm. I want really thin little circles of serrano. I'm slicing slightly at an angle because that's who I am as a person. Uh, just slice it in really small little circles. If you would, if you really don't like that much spice, go ahead, don't. Don't include this. Uh, we're also gonna put some cilantro on top, so you can only do that if you want, or just eat it the way it is. The green will be nice for garnish. The green is a really nice garnish, and I just really like the fresh, raw chili bite. So, got lots of little chili rounds. We got our uh, green onion garnish over here, and now, Let's prep a little bit of cilantro leaf and then we'll make our sauce. I was thinking about like chopping up cilantro and sprinkling it over the top. However, I think it will look really pretty to lay a cilantro leaf over it underneath the chili. So I'm just individually picking them off. And then we're also going to make a sweet kind of teriyaki sauce to garnish it with as well. We have the spicy, uh, savory tuna, and the sweet sauce is something I've seen when I order this in restaurants, and I really like the contrast of flavors. So for the sauce, okay. are you wanting like a measuring cup? Yeah, so we're gonna make, I wrote down what I wanted to do, so I have that here. We're gonna actually do it on the stove. We're gonna do half cup of water, an eighth cup of soy, three teaspoons of brown sugar, and then are we gonna add cornstarch? Yeah, we are. So That's we're gonna heat it shiny. all this. Yeah, and thick. Yeah. So we're gonna heat all this together, and then we'll finish it with um, a little cornstarch slurry, which is just water and cornstarch. Whenever you're adding cornstarch to thicken something, you want to make a slurry because Cornstarch is really clumpy and it'll just clump up in whatever liquid you put it in. So by mixing it with some water before you add it to another liquid um, sauce will ensure that it is like dissolved incorporated. and incorporated evenly. Do you want honey in it? Yeah, let's do half a, a tablespoon of honey. Half a tablespoon? No. Yeah, just like eyeball it, whatever. It's probably good, yeah. 
And then we're gonna put, let's uh, turn the little heat on here. The little heat. And then add in this ginger. It's about a teaspoon of fresh ginger. And then I'm gonna use granulated garlic. Just a little dash of that. Probably like a eh, eighth of a teaspoon. So we're gonna bring it to a simmer now, which you can hear it, it is. And then I'm gonna turn down the heat and stir as I'm adding this in. Then turn your heat back up and bring it back to a simmer. Oh, perfect, it's coming to a simmer. Oh, you can even see as it okay. simmers, the way that it simmers, obviously it's thick. Do you see like the surface? Yeah, you can see like the slow bubble looks like a caramel. Yeah, it's a little thicker, nice. I don't want it to be super thick. I actually think this is perfect because as something cools, oh, it will still thicken. Perfect. Yeah, the next step is to just fry the rice and then uh, top it with the tuna and garnish everything and we're done. Super easy. Perfect. Cold block of rice. Yeah, let's hope it's nice and cold enough. I'm gonna try to pry it out of here. I probably should have put something underneath it, but. So, Dumb move, we should have put like a little parchment hammock or something underneath it, but this is fine. It worked, we got it out. This is canola oil. Yeah, we're using, gonna use canola oil. How much, medium? Medium and high? Let's go, yeah, medium for now, let it heat up and then we might bump it up a little. Yeah. My knife is a little wet. The water will help the knife not stick to the rice. I'm really bad at straight lines. I was gonna say. And I like can't see very well either. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wet it again. This guy did a little bit. We'll just squish it back together. Okay, so I put a little piece of rice in there to test the heat of the pan. I now think all this liquid on this rice is gonna make it a really spattery situation. Let's just be really careful. With the lid, you don't want to steam it. No steam. Just be careful with the oil spatters on yourself. Here we go. I'm not exactly sure how long to fry them. I'm just gonna look for color. If you're really nervous, you can use it, your shield. <laughs> I do this a lot if I'm frying something that's super spattery and I have to tend to it. And we just wait for color. I'm expecting to see golden brown edges, and then I'll flip them. But I've never fried rice like this before, so um, we'll see. We are- <laughs> Your look of concern by the, by the oil is so hot. It's a little hot. I am pretty used to popping oil. It doesn't phase me that much, but I'm concerned for you all. Obviously, I've said I've never done this before, so I didn't know how much it was gonna pop. And I'm nervous that if you try it, you'll burn yourself. <laughs> We're gonna turn over the ones that are browning. We're gonna brown both sides. So you want them to be nice and golden brown and crispy like those are, but not too, too, too brown where uh, the whole thing like crisps up. You want it to be crispy and chewy, you know? We're draining them on a towel. We ran out of paper towels in the house. 
So we are using just a dishcloth right now to set them on so that the oil doesn't pool under them. And make it all soggy. And, and make them greasy. soggy. Yeah. What, you have a shield? No, I just yeah. was trying to shield you with my arm. Oh, wow. That is love. Heroic, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe we turn the heat down a little and then it's less violent and it goes slower. Who knows? Not that. Not that. I'm gonna finish frying everything up. I'll come back to you when they're all done and I'll let you know if I made any uh, adjustments. So we're just about done here. They're looking super nice and crispy. I actually turned the heat down to a little under medium and it really helped with how badly they were popping. Um, so more of a medium to medium low heat for this worked a lot better. Camille and I actually looked at how much rice we had and looked at how much tuna we had and said, let's make the other eight ounces that we bought. So we um, just doubled what we had just done. These guys are almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and tend to these while those finish cooking. Get a nice big scoop of it and use the second spoon to push it off and onto the rice. Let's do it again. You want a pretty generous portion. Some of my little rice squares are a little smaller than others, so I'm gonna use a little less on those because it, I want it to be proportional to the rice. It smells so good. And then you're thinking a little cilantro leaf on top? Yeah, so we'll do one cilantro leaf on the top of all of them and one ring of serrano. Oh, they look so pretty. This is just garnish. I love this plate. It looks so um, nice to have it be like kind of rectangular and everything is square and aligned. Mm. And then I'm gonna take this uh, little teriyaki sauce that we made and I'm gonna drizzle a little over the um, top of it. And then I'll serve a little on the side if people want um, a, a little more of the sweet sauce. I'm trying not to get too much because the flavor in the tuna itself is so amazing. So we have it all plated up pretty for our roomies, but Camille and I obviously want to try it. Mmm. That's pretty damn, damn perfect. Mmm. Wow. The two rices I served us were the worst of the batch, and really? they were still really crispy. Yeah. Least crispy of the batch. Spicy. Mmm. It has really a really spicy. good kick to, kick to it. I think mm. the serrano adds a lot of heat, but man, the flavor is delicious. That fish tastes really fresh. Um, I mean, all of it. It ties really well. It, it's like spicy. And then you have the fried kind of crunchy rice. Mm -hmm. You still get the fresh bite on the top. Mm -hmm. I love it. And it's beautiful. Like a little sweet. Yeah, I like the sweet um, mm -hmm. contrast with that sauce, definitely. Wow. It's really pretty. I mean, if you serve this at a party, like, look at that. I mean, how fast would that go? Come on. It's so gorgeous. The rice does take a minute, but you could Try make it ahead of time. Is trying to get rice out of my teeth. You could, <laughs> you could make the rice ahead of time and stick it in the oven to stay warm or, you know, set it on the side. It'll stay crispy. Yeah, it's probably smart. Um, but, I mean, Home run. Like, Success. Still chewy in the middle. Amazing. The outside. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I wow. think hopefully we can get one of our roommates down here to try it. Do you want to um, to try one on camera? It's really good. <laughs> okay, bye. Yay, Jess! Yay. Wow! Isn't that pretty? They look beautiful. I'm gonna give you this one. They're pretty spicy, but okay. I think in it is pretty spicy, okay. but. I'm a little baby when it comes to spice, so here we go. She's not that bad. Mmm, crunch. <laughs> wow. Good, right? Mm-hmm. I know, it's like, if this got served at a party, how fast would that plate go? Oh my god, literally. Mm-mm-mm. Mm, what do you think? Too spicy? No, no. I think it's, um, the, like, it's the same amount of spice that we would get if we got crispy okay. rice, tuna, add some sheep. Okay. 
So good. Very crunchy. You like the cilantro? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking like, maybe something like a, not sweet, but like a tiny bit more sweet on it. We so have like, a sauce for the side. Mm -hmm. That's what we put on it. I'm gonna try another one. We'll put a little extra sweet sure. on it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it balances out more. You like more we put sauce? put some on it, but Naomi was concerned about putting too much because the mm. tuna tastes good and she didn't want it yeah. to be like too overpowered, but. Yeah, it does taste good. You can wipe it in that if you want. More Yay! Sauce on it, but too. Yum! Alright. Yay, I'm glad you like it. Thanks Thank for stopping you. by. <laughs> Thanks for stopping Hi. by. <laughs> well, Camille? Another success. Another success. <laughs> it's crazy that we didn't make these sooner, honestly. Um, now, next time we have a sushi night, I definitely think. We'll make these for people. Yeah. It's impressive and not too crazy difficult. Not too difficult. The rice took a little time, but I love them. And I think we can do them with salmon next time. Yes, hopefully. Would be really, really tasty. And they're so impressive looking. I just love how beautiful they are. The contrast of the green with the tuna and the sauce and everything together is just so nice. I think I said before, I love little like, especially hors d'oeuvres at parties that are like bite sized, mm -hmm. little snacks that are quick, like our little cups we did. Definitely. The block. Yeah. And this is like a perfect Japanese one. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> really is. It's a different is. taste. It really is. Uh, well, I love it. Let's take the tray around and go feed our roommates and we'll see you all next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye everybody.